Hi, we are going to make a very healthy coffee mm -hmm. with urea and we are going to be using some very interesting ingredients. It's going to be organic coffee, we have organic cacao, psyllium husk and we can actually spice it up with very good quality cardamom and a bit of cane pepper. But the most important thing is why are we using these ingredients, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so for me, the reason why I like to use very high quality um, cocoa powder, so this is organic cocoa powder, pure with nothing added, unsweetened, is because it has a very full chocolatey taste. It's very rich in magnesium, so nowadays I feel that it's very good for people who are stressed because under stress in our daily lives we need a lot of magnesium and that is I think why people crave to eat chocolate. Only commercial chocolate has a lot of sugar so I like to make my drink with unsweetened cocoa powder. So, so tell me, I know that magnesium is a very good muscle relaxant, you know mm -hmm. people who can't sleep if they have magnesium they sleep better. Mm -hmm. so, mm, so you think this might be a good drink without the coffee, of course, before going to bed? No, because it also contains a caffeine-like substance called theobromine, or theobromine it's sometimes called. In cacao? So in cacao. So it will also usually slightly wake you up. So I personally, when I feel I'm a little bit starting to be tired towards four o'clock in the afternoon, I don't have the oomph to go for the rest of the day, I make myself unsweetened cocoa. So it's a mm -hmm. very soft, stimulating, caffeine-like effect. It's a pick-me-up. It gives me magnesium and most of all, there are substances in cacao that release in the brain the hormone that makes us feel loved. So yeah. if you feel overwhelmed and suddenly you feel loved, like you can do whatever's on your desk and you get it done. Yeah. Also know that cacao is really very good, particularly for women mm -hmm. who are going through perimenopause or menopause because the antioxidants in cacao is going to actually help in better temperature regulation. So it also helps in uh, hot flushes. Uh, right. Sometimes, I mean, of course, it's excellent for men as well. It's got very high antioxidants. But what I see is you've got two varieties of organic cacao. Mm -hmm. They look different. This looks a bit lighter and this looks darker. Mm -hmm. And they're both of very good quality. Can you tell me why would there be a difference in mm -hmm. the aroma or even the color of mm -hmm. cacao? So nowadays we have mostly cultivated var varieties of cacao. So like in apples or pears, you have different varieties, different kinds. They come yeah. in different sizes, they come in different degrees of darkness and in different flavors. And connoisseurs will know where to pick to get the flavor they want. It also depends on the climate. Right. So if, say, I were to go to a shop mm -hmm. and I'm going to choose uh, cacao, what are the three important factors I should be looking at? Mm -hmm. So for me, the most important is that it's 100% pure powder of cacao with nothing added, especially no sweeteners. The second is it should be organic because commercial varieties, um, the beans, mm -hmm. once they are fermented and prepared, they get chemically treated and there's a residue of that in the non-organic powder. And thirdly, I personally, what I'm looking for is that it is also a fair trade product mm -hmm. from a small cooperative so that me having my cacao does not exploit people somewhere else in the world. So you're not uh, supporting a big chocolate industry by doing this. Right. But you're supporting people who actually make a living right. fair by trade. growing and harvesting cacao. Right. Fair trade means that they are fairly paid right. for the beans they're selling. Wow. In okay. a way that they can mm -hmm. eat, go to the doctor when they need to and send their children to school. Mm -hmm. I have used uh, psyllium husk largely to deal with constipation because it's mm. got very high fiber. I never have seen anybody using psyllium husk to make uh, coffee. Tell me about that. Why? What's the relevance of it? 
Um, it can just be added to any kind of liquid and because nowadays we sit too much and a lot of us have too much calcium or chalk in our drinking water get dried out on the inside. So this by adding fiber it um, keeps the moisture in the guts, it lubricates the guts and it also catches toxins. So it's just a wonderful thing to add to your cacao. For it, gives, really. it gives it gives bulk and uh, uh, yeah the good thing about psyllium uh, husk is it's really low carbohydrate. Yeah, I don't know that there's any carbohydrate in it. Uh, it's fiber, so yeah. yeah. So it would be fantastic that way. Uh, so and then we are mm -hmm. going to add either hot water if you don't mm -hmm. want coffee. In my case, because I love coffee, I just have actually brewed this organic coffee and I'm just going to add it to this lovely traditional North German cup. Mm -hmm. That looks good. good. Okay, so now you say I can add cardamom. Yes, so I personally like to add cardamom because um, it's a very mild conditioner, sorry, stimulant, something that balances digestion and it is very good for people who are sensitive by nature and I'm rather sensitive so it seems to be like a wonderful balancer. For me personally, I like it a lot. I do believe that people like tastes or something that's good for them. So if you like the taste, then it's probably going to be good for you. Or in Latin America, very often they also use cayenne pepper, just a pinch. Just a pinch. So we've got some good cayenne pepper here. Yeah, those are flakes. I've never actually mm -hmm. uh, used yes. cayenne pepper with coffee at all. Yeah, so let me try, shall I? Yeah. How much? This much? I think that's too much. Too much? Okay. Well, this so is pretty hot chili. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Two flakes? Sure. And there's actually a whole... There are cacao rituals in the tradition of, for instance, the Mayas and the Aztecs. Mm -hmm. And the ritual of combining cacao with cayenne has to do with becoming aware of the destiny of your life. So, wow. So is yeah. it like eating uh, chocolate with chili? Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But in a more healthy way, I suppose. Right. And I've also made, so for instance, I'm going to make a cacao. So I have cocoa powder and psyllium husk in here, mm -hmm. which I'm going to stir a little bit so they mix better. And I'm going to add boiling water and some cardamom. Mm -hmm. And um, then I'm going to also So that's just add about a quarter teaspoon of cardamom, not too right, much. Right, right. Less than a quarter teaspoon actually, because if it is good quality cardamom, mm -hmm. then this it's going to be so strong. Uh -huh. This yeah. one was held. So, if when you buy a cardamom, it can either be like this, in a way that is still in a green outer hull, or it can be just the black seeds that are inside. So this. Yeah is purely the ground black seed, so it's very strong. Should this be organic as well? Yes, it should be organic because all spices in general are chemically treated yes, to yeah. make them um, yeah. hold up longer, which is unnecessary because if they are kept under good conditions in a dry environment away yeah. from the sun, they will keep yeah. anyways. And also, did you know that actually uh, if it is imported, mm -hmm. usually it's irradiated. Yes. And then sometimes uh, they take the aroma out of mm -hmm. cardamom and they actually spray cardamom uh, perfume on it. Oh my so God. there are so many ways mm -hmm. how people actually are filtrated. Therefore, it's very yeah. important mm -hmm. uh, to buy uh, organic, good quality spices. Right. Um, Okay. And there's also a fashion, for instance, in France to bleach 
the hulls because it supposedly makes them look more elegant which is also a chemical process so you would want to get um, cardamom parts that look greenish like those should uh, cardamom be looking elegant I don't think so. I think it should smell and taste amazing. Okay, so the appearance is not that very important. I do not think so. And you will remember this. In um, India, the children will chew these pods to the point where they can smell cardamom on their breath. It's used as a breath freshener, but also to cough up mucus if you yes, have yes. a bronchitis stuck in your yeah. bronchies. So it's a very, very amazing It's very good for healing. the respiratory system. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and also, you know, just uh, by, you know, when you hull this mm -hmm. and use the black seeds and then the skin, mm -hmm. if you just uh, put it in water, mm -hmm. uh, it's very good to purify water. And also it gives water that kind of nice aroma. And generally, you know, children, they don't like drinking water. Mm -hmm. Even sometimes as we find water very boring. Mm -hmm. That's why we're going for sparkling water, which may not be always good, mm -hmm. but it gives aroma to water and then you actually can drink it better. Uh, coming back to our drink now, uh, so that's coconut milk. Yes, this is unsweetened coconut milk. There are a lot of these dairy-free milks that have all kinds of strange ingredients, so you want to really read what's in there. So this is a very good one that I think is good because it really only contains coconut and water. Mm -hmm. So it is not sweetened. It will cream up my cocoa. Why is it called coconut milk if it contains water and coconut? I think it's called milk because um, milk is an emulsion and it's an emulsion made out of the greasy coconut meat and the water uh -huh. and I don't add it because I think it's particularly healthy so anything that is in a tetra pack usually isn't I'm doing this I have to confess because I grew up in northern Germany which is a huge dairy based yeah. culinary culture and this is the one step I have not yet been able to make so I'm I can be very happy with my hot cocoa like that there's also dark chocolate with salt. Yes. So I've also made this cocoa with a pinch of salt, all to cut down on sugar in drinks and sugar in my food. The one thing I haven't managed to do yet, um, gladly, is have a hot cocoa without something milky, something that gives me this creamy consistency. Yeah, it's interesting because, you know, with uh, black coffee, you probably mm -hmm. can enjoy it. But if yeah. you're making a cacao drink just with water, mm -hmm. it doesn't. Uh, I suppose, you know, for me, I really like to use non-dairy mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, if you, you may not always get A2 type of milk, mm -hmm. which is much better than A1 type because A1 can have, uh, can cause allergies or even food hypersensitivity. Uh, I use uh, unsweetened almond milk. Uh, mm -hmm. And... Uh, Actually, there's quite a bit of research on mm -hmm. the benefits of coffee with coconut milk, mm -hmm. which is a very good fat burner and it, it can be a, a very good pre-workout drink as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so here we go. So that's our um, uh, mm -hmm. coffee, healthy coffee. And cacao. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, Lilia, for showing me this new afternoon drink. Well, and also what you'll find is that the psyllium husk actually adds more substance and creaminess to it. Because it's fiber, it will also cut down on hunger. So then at four o'clock, I can make it till dinner without wanting to snack. It's amazing how strong it tastes and it's quite satisfying. It's not yeah. like a yeah, it's almost like a soup, you know. Yeah, it's like you can feel all the aromas coming through. So it's quite um, stimulating to the senses, which is exactly what we want mm -hmm. from coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, why not drink a healthy coffee like this and not smell of 
coffee, but mm-hmm. smell of cardamom, which is always good. You know, another thing that we forgot to say is that actually there's a great oriental tradition of adding cardamom to coffee. Do you also have that in India? Yes, yeah. Uh, particularly in uh, Arabic coffee. Yes. Or even, you know, uh, in all Middle Eastern mm-hmm. traditions, uh, uh, their uh, drink always has this mm. particular flavor of uh, coffee. And also sometimes they add uh, saffron to it. Right. So our viewers may not know that it is said that cardamom offsets the damaging effects of the coffee itself to the nervous system. Yes, yeah. It reduces the effect of uh, stimulating effect of caffeine and actually it still will give you the benefit of chlorinergic acid and uh, other antioxidants which are present in coffee. Right. So if you want a healthy coffee, think of coffee with cardamom. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm.